I first started trying to make ancient pottery replicas when I was still in high school. Back then, there wasn't a lot of information around about how to make this kind of pottery. But my school library had a couple of books about Maria Martinez, the famous potter from San Ildefonso Pueblo, New Mexico. In this way, Maria Martinez became my first pottery teacher. I pored over those books for any scrap of information I could find about how she processed clay or formed pottery or especially how she fired. And there wasn't much. Those books were written for tourists and art collectors, not for serious students of Southwestern pottery. Oh, don't get me wrong. There was a lot of good information, but it tended to be incomplete. For example, it might tell me that Maria went out in the desert and collected wild clay, but it wouldn't have any good pictures of what that clay looked like or give you any clues about how to find wild clay in your desert. It might say that she tempered her pottery with volcanic ash, but it wouldn't give you the ratio of clay to temper, which was critical. Just enough information to get a teenage boy into trouble and not enough information to help him get out of that trouble. At this stage, my pottery was mostly failures. I wish I had some pictures I could show you what my pottery looked like back then, but I don't seem to have any pictures from that era, probably because I wasn't too proud of the pottery I was making. But that all changed in August of 1989. That was the month that a couple of pottery replicators were featured on the cover of Arizona Highways. I was blown away. Not only was the pottery of Paul and Laurel Thornburg exquisite, but it turned out that they only lived 20 miles away from me in Canelo, Arizona. Around this same time, my parents had found an announcement in a New Mexico newspaper that said that this couple was looking for white clay in Southern New Mexico. Well, I had found some white clay in Southern New Mexico, so I called them on the phone and they asked me to bring it over. So on a rainy August day in 1989, my mom and I went to the Thornburg's house and there they filled in all the gaps that the Maria Martinez books had left. They told me how to process clay. They told me where I could dig clay. They told me what I should look for. I left their house with a lump of processed clay and a gourd scraper, and I was all set to make pottery. I went home that day and for the first time started to make pottery that I could be proud of. From that time, through the 90s and into the early 2000s, I continued to work alone without any outside influences except the ancient sherds themselves. This is not to say that the ancient sherds weren't teaching me anything. Those ancient potters have much to teach. Those ancient potters were my original muse way back when I was in high school. And through the years, they have continued to teach and inspire me. In 2012, I decided that there must be other primitive potters working out there like me alone. And I wanted to find them. So I set up a Facebook group that at that time I called Traditional Southwest Pottery and started adding content to it regularly. But I thought it looked kind of stupid to have a group of one, so I actually added my wife and kids just so it didn't look so empty. The first real experienced potter to join my group was a man named Tom Weiss, who had been making replicas of the ancient pottery near his home in Prescott, Arizona, and teaching pottery classes at the Smoky Museum there. Tom was such a great resource for me. He was somebody I could bounce ideas off of, and he had a background in science, so he encouraged me to be more scientific in my work, to keep better records, to do experiments, and to write up my findings to be published. Tom Weiss was the first real, living pottery hero that I had, someone I could ask questions of whenever I had one, a good friend and a great potter. Unfortunately, Tom was hit by a drunk driver recently and passed away in April of this year. I only met Tom in person twice, once at the 2015 Southwest Kiln Conference and again at his home a few years later. Sometime around 2006, I got my hands on the Bulletin of Primitive Technology Spring 1998 issue. In it were articles written by both John Olson and Clint Swink, two men who would have a huge impact on the trajectory of my pottery career. John Olson began making replica pottery in the 1970s when I was just a baby. By the time I started making progress in the 1990s, John had already done it all, from corrugated to polychrome. In 2014, when I attended my first Southwest Kiln Conference, I heard a lot of people talking about John Olson. John was the next master potter to join my Facebook group after Tom, 
and also was very helpful in answering questions and encouraging others. I first met John in person at the 2015 Southwest Kiln Conference. He is surprisingly humble and generous with his pottery knowledge. I don't know if John has any pottery secrets, but he seems to give away all his pottery knowledge freely and generously, which is a rare thing among potters. In the summer of 2021, I was able to travel to John's house in Southern Utah and learn from him about corrugated pottery, a subject for which he is widely considered to be the master. While there, I made a video about him, his story, and how to make corrugated pottery. I will link that video above and also down in the doobly-doo. Clint Swink started experimenting with replicating ancient pottery back in the late 80s. By the early 90s, he had developed a three-step process for firing a trench kiln that he called a limited oxidation firing. His method is still the gold standard by which most Anazazi black on white pottery replicas are produced. Although the pottery he was replicating was different in many ways from that I was focused on, there are many similarities too. Coil and scrape construction, slipping, polishing, and organic paint among them. Around 2013, I found Clint Swink's book, Messages from the High Desert on Amazon and purchased it. When I first organized the Southwest Kiln Conference in 2015, I made a list of all the people I wanted to get there to give presentations and demonstrations. On this list were all the above mentioned living pottery heroes, Tom Weiss, Paul and Laurel Thornburg, John Olson, and another person who I had not yet connected with personally, Clint Swink. And all of them, with the exception of the Thornburgs, came to that kiln conference in 2015. After that, Clint became my go-to pottery question guy. He was a regular on my Facebook pottery group, and we emailed back and forth quite a bit. After the 2016 conference, we went clay hunting together along the Mogollon Rim, and I visited his home in Southern Colorado a few times. Like Tom Weiss mentioned earlier, Clint encouraged me to keep better records, to do more experiments, and to write up my findings more. In the spring of 2019, I visited Clint at his home and made a video about him and his pottery. I will put a link to that video above and in the doobly-doo. With the recent loss of Tom Weiss, I was reminded that this older generation of potters isn't getting any younger. And it won't be long before me and my generation will be the old potters. So I wanted to make this video now honoring those who have helped me out in my journey. These are my teachers and my pottery heroes. Whenever I had any spare moment, I'd come and go to the back room, look at curriculum, sure. Drive myself crazy. And, and it was like, all of a sudden it just clicked. It's like, this is the easiest thing in the world. Why work so hard? <laughs>